What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, what's up? How's it going? And if you're coming back, what's up? How's it going, dude? It's so good to see you again. I hope you're doing well, all right? See what happens when you subscribe to my channel, you get an extra greeting at the beginning of every single one of my videos. So press the subscribe button for an extra greeting, dude. Please, folks. I love the outdoors. I love it. You know, when doors are outside, so cool. I'm just kidding about both of those things. I don't like uh, camping or the outdoors. The The last time I went camping, I, uh, I was four years old and I burnt my finger on a sprinkler. Hey guys, I'm a fucking idiot. I meant to say sparkler, not sprinkler. Classic. Okay, bye. But there's a lot of people who love the outdoors and that's great, you know? Do you. Pitch that tent. Pitch it. Fucking throw it at a baseball man. Home run. There's so many people who enjoy the outdoors that there's whole entire television networks devoted to being outside, which kind of doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> if you really loved outdoors, you wouldn't be inside watching TV, right? But I digress. And there's so many like survival outdoor shows, right? We've all seen them, you know? You got Survivor, Survivor Man, Naked and Afraid. And who can forget Bear Grylls' famous show, Yum Yum Yummy, That's Some Delicious Piss. So I have a series on my channel where uh, we look back at some old Canadian television shows um, because a lot of my viewers are American and you didn't grow up with some of the Canadian television shows that I grew up with. And they're all very bad and not good. So today we're gonna be taking a look at an old uh, Canadian survival show. And to be honest, I completely forgot about this show. I didn't, I, Totally erased it from my mind until I saw this post on Instagram. Anyone else remember that Canadian reality TV show where two contestants with zero experience get left in the wilderness and have to get out while that cowboy tracked them down on his horse? And the contestants had to outrun and hide and they'd see him galloping over in the distance and they just get so scared and start sprinting into the bushes but they would always tumble down a hill or something and hurt they are legs and the cowboy would catch up and lasso them. This show, was called Man Tracker. And they aired this show on OLN, which is the Outdoor Life Network. I believe they played it later on at night because I remember like falling asleep to this show for some reason, like pretty frequently. Before we track some men, I just wanna remind you, uh, the tour is coming up very soon. Uh, the We Are Two Different People tour, the tour that I am opening for uh, with Danny Gonzalez and Drew Gooden. We're going to a bunch of cities uh, across America. So if you wanna come, Grab your tickets. Uh, some shows are sold out, but there's some tickets for other shows as well. So link in the description, go check it out and come see us, dude. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's track some men. Know your land, know your prey. Yes! Left, left, left. Let's go say hi. So it gave you a little hint into what we can expect. You know, a lot of running around in the forest. Uh, because that's all this show is, really. But now we find out from the narrator how the show works. Cowboy Terry Grant has been at this for years with forensic skill and horsemanship to spare. Terry Grant has been hunting humans for years. Oh, put him in jail. I'm sure a serial killer pitched this show, right? Hey, okay, I got a, I got a great idea for a show. Okay, hear me out. So there's, they, we let people free in the woods, right? And there's a guy and he goes and kills them. I don't know about that. I that, that seems really illegal. No, 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 no. I, I, it's fine. I do it all the time. And it's fine. Am I in jail? No, I'm. Uh, it's fine. Let's just do it, okay? I don't. I don't know. Come on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Uh, when do you When do you want to start shooting? Right now. It's not what I meant. Okay. So how the show works? Um, the prey, they have to get to the finish line, uh, before Man Tracker tracks them down and yeah, catches them. I I don't know. It's, it's pretty vague. I don't really know what happens to them when he gets them. He might just fucking kill them, I don't know. So they get a two kilometer head start, um, and then it's fucking free reign, dude. And if they make it to the finish line before Man Tracker, they win. What do they win, you ask? Nothing. They just get to bring it up 
in conversation to people who don't give a fuck at all. And that's the best prize ever, I think. Yo, what's up? <laughs> Yo, you wanna hear something cool? One time I escaped from a scary cowboy on TV. <clears throat> Fine, your loss is what the producers of Man Tracker didn't say to me when I won. Okay, so now we meet the prey, the people who will be running away from Man Tracker. Jesse Lumsden, as a key member of Canada's bobsled team. You have to adapt and you have to evolve if you want to survive. Enter Lumsden's bobsled teammate, Justin Cripps. Yeah, the show is Canadian, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> and dude, this part makes me laugh a lot. Like, they do these weird shots where they're showing the prey like their video game characters with like statistics and skills and stuff. And like, I don't understand, like who decides on that, right? Like the video editor, I guess? <laughs> like for example, this Jesse guy, his strength is all the way to the end. He's as strong as a human can be. He can't get any stronger. That's what that means. <laughs> on second thought, actually, that's pretty funny. We should, all, I think every YouTuber should have to put that in the beginning of their video as well. <laughs> like their little statistics. That's not true. Why would, why would you put that? Hey, st stop. What? Stop. <laughs> Fuck this guy. Okay, so now we meet Man Tracker's sidekick. Boy Tracker. <laughs> That's not his name. Uh, his name is Phil Lemieux, guide sidekick extraordinaire. So he knows everything about the land. He knows everything because he's been hunting moose. Meese. He's hunted moose through every corner of this bush. Damn. When you think about it, humans really just be some smaller meese. <laughs> okay, so now we know everyone. We know how the show works. The bobsled boys are two kilometers ahead, and we're off. Let's get her. Okay, so they keep running, and then uh, we find out that the, the one guy has a, a hamstring sprain. My hamstring's really hurting. It already cramped up fully. Ouch, my string of ham. I heard it. Okay. It's so dumb. Okay, so honestly, the thing about the show is that it could be five minutes long, because the majority of it is just people fucking walking around in a forest. Um, so it's impressive that they got it up to 20 minutes. But what's even more impressive is that this show isn't 20 minutes. It's 46 minutes long. If I wanted to watch people fart around in a forest for a while, I'd watch Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. <laughs> Am I right? Wingardium Levy, oh snap. I fucking got him. Bruh. JK. Rowling, bro, I can't stop. Okay, so they run around the forest for a bit while the, the man tracker tracks the men down. And this is where we get our first close encounter. And holy shit, it's fucking terrifying. And Chuck Norris is man tracker's father. Oh, hello. Oh, shit. <laughs> left, left, left. We busted in there. Look what I found, buddy. Who are we chasing, Rumble? That sidekick is a beauty, dude. I love him. He's awesome. Just such a fucking Northern Ontario guy. Can't wait to catch these guys so we can fucking have a Sally down at the pub, fucking pound back some roots with the boys. Fuck. <laughs> That's what he just said, I think. So this is like a common thing that happens in the show. Like they'll be messing around in the woods for a while and then man tracker and boy tracker will like, like just like spook them. <laughs> and then they'll just sprint away. And dude, it's just really funny to think about the cameramen on this show. Like, wow, dude, what a shitty job to have, right? They have to run with huge cameras every time they get chased by Man Tracker, which kind of makes me think this show is fake. Like in this one scene when the prey is hiding from Man Tracker, like a few feet away. He's standing right there, eh? You wanna go in deeper? He doesn't see the huge fucking camera being held by a man. <laughs> also, the whole thing is like man tracker is faster because he's on a horse, right? Um, but that would also mean the cameraman is on a horse or is as fast as a horse. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. Or is as fast as a horse. Bro, the cameraman's legs must be fucking huge, man. <laughs> Every day is it's only leg day for the man tracker cameraman. Honestly, dude, the more I think about it, if this show is real, 
Okay, if it's 100% real, the only logical explanation is that the cameramen are centaurs. Hi, I'm Mrs. Bean, attorney at law. No relation. Were you or a loved one once employed as a cameraman for a man tracker between the years 2006 and 2012? Well, you may be entitled to compensation. Our legal team has brought justice to many man tracker cameramen. Just hear this amazing story from one of our clients. Hello. I was a camera horseman on Man Tracker for two seasons. The conditions were brutal. I mean, if, sure, I could catch up with the prey no problem because of my buff horse legs. But they only paid me in carrots. That my top half is human. I don't. I don't know why they thought I only liked carrots. But Mrs. Bean was able to get me the money that I deserved. So let's stand together and say nay to centaur abuse. So if your legs are just so fucking huge that you can't even walk down the street, or if you're a centaur not knowing what to do with your life, call that number down below. Hi, I'm season three of The OC, and I approve this message. Bye. Okay, so the prey um, finally escaped from Man Tracker, and um, so they filmed like this little like confessional video on their camcorder called the Prey Cam. And I don't like this part of the show, okay? If you want a real Prey Cam, check this out. Hi God, uh, it's me, just wanna say hi, I love you, you're so handsome, you're such a handsome God, and I hope you do nice things for me. Okay, bye bye. Jesus Christ, that was funny. Yes it was. Back to the show. We realized that it's not about going fast on the trail because you're not gonna be going faster than a horse. Or a cameraman with huge legs. Trips plays lead blocker, and the prey reorient themselves back to their original bearing. Okay, so this next part is maybe a, another kind of giveaway that it's probably fake. Or maybe it's just like an editing thing. But they're walking through the forest and the one guy's like, hey, make sure you don't step on any sticks because it's really loud and then Man Tracker will hear us and then kill us. You hear a snappy branches because it, it echoes a lot, right? And then literally four seconds, the guy steps on a fucking stick. <laughs> and Man Tracker's like, whoa. Oh. I just heard a Krishna back there. Yeah. I'm looking right up. Okay, let's go say hi. Fucking that's so scary, being chased by two cowboys in the woods. Ugh, dude, I'm never gonna be able to go on hikes anymore. I mean, I I never went, I never go on hikes, but now now I can't ever for sure. Hey, did you step on my stick? Uh, I heard it. I heard you step on my stick. That was alone. my stick. I love <laughs> no, that I stick. Did. You I didn't stepped mean on to. it. Okay, so they escape Man Tracker and uh, they keep farting around in the woods. It's a roll reversal with Tracker blazing the trail and the prey in the rear. But soaked and sluggish in the bush, the Olympians revert back to trail travel. That is what she said. <laughs> back to the show. Fuck! I don't know if they see me or not. Just push whack it. There's no other way to do it. I'll He's tracking you! Be other careful! Is. Just go, 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 go. Anyways! Oh! Jack, I'm running. Oh, yeah. He's with the Bailey of the frame, the soft spot. It's getting thick in here, boy. That's what my friends say whenever I walk into the room. It's getting thick in here, boy. <laughs> it was really good that we jumped off there because, you know, there's no way a horse can go through this. So yet another escape from a close encounter with Man Tracker, but now Man Tracker's getting sad and grumpy. The country is not helping us at all. And I was getting a little depressed and I was getting a little mad. So then the boys cut through an abandoned mine, uh, which, you know, just which is the obvious choice um, because horses can't go through there, you know? Horses hate mines. <laughs> we bushwhacked probably about four or five hundred meters. We'll come right out to the lower shaft. I got a lower shaft right here for you. Who's <laughs> the old shaft? <laughs> I got an old shaft right here for you. <laughs> okay, so they uh, so so they make it through the old shaft, and um, and then they uh, they set up a tent. And they have some beef stroganoff. Cooked up some uh, beef stroganoff. And it was awesome. It was awesome. And then when they wake up, there's a lot more shots of them just walking around in the forest. And honestly, dude, I feel like they got like the rough plot like of what things were gonna happen in this show. And then they film those and then they're like, okay, yeah, let's just get shots of us just like looking around in the forest and like 
uh, stepping on branches and stuff. Because literally that's all this show is, dude. Jesse Lumsden are on the run, forced by the riders into the impenetrable bush of Northern Ontario. I got an impenetrable bush right here for you. <laughs> okay, that's it. I don't know if I'm just super immature, but dude, if you can say impenetrable bush without laughing, dude, run for president, okay? I, you have all, you have my vote, because that's very impressive. Okay, so we're getting close to the end. Uh, this part, they have to like cross this like river to get to the, the finish line. And this part got me thinking like, the man tracker could just gallop all the way to the finish line because he's on a horse and then just wait there for them to show up and he'd win every fucking time, dude. Also, here's a hot take, dude, okay? I'm spilling tea. Cowboys should be called horse boys. I said it. When have you, have you seen, ever seen a cowboy on an actual cow? No, they're always on horses, bro. Sorry for saying something so controversial, okay? Gonna do the two-step in horse boy boogie something. I'm gonna track these men, okay. Shoot. <laughs> so as you saw, they have a pretty crazy encounter with the man tracker, and this one's by far the gnarliest, dude. Whoa, whoa, dude. Chill. Who are we chasing, Rumble? This is another interesting scene because the cameraman, the the well the the centaur the camera centaur was in the, in the perfect spot to catch this jump you know he was standing still it wasn't like he was running to catch up with him so i'm suspicious okay okay so after that crazy chase scene um the boys are split up that was a long sprint my hamster can't handle it things aren't looking too good but since they're split up now we know that there is not one, but two cameramen following the bobsled boys. Now it's even less believable that the man tracker can't see two other guys holding huge, four guys <laughs> and two have huge cameras and he just can't see them when he's feet away. Okay, dude. I can track men no problem, but see two cameras? Fuck off, no way. I've never seen a camera in my life. What am I looking at right now? Nothing. Okay, so we're almost done the episode, I promise. Um, but this is the part where I kind of realized uh, this blonde bobsled guy, he, he kind of has a catchphrase throughout this episode. He'll be like explaining why he's doing what he's doing, like walking across like a fallen tree or like climbing something. And he'll be like, oh, well, a horse can't do this. Let's see a horse do this. Bring a horse up here. Because you're not gonna be going faster than a horse. It's really good that we jumped off there because you know, there's no way a horse can go through this. And I know he's saying that to like explain why he's doing what he's doing and to be like, yeah, I'm gonna outsmart Man Tracker by doing this. But I, it's very fun to imagine that he just went on this show because he has a personal vendetta against horses and their abilities. Uh, and action. All right, so uh, we just walked across that thin uh, tree along the river because horses are too big to do that. Great, I think you nailed it. I think we can, uh, I think we probably and keep then, going if you want. When I got over the oh, little tree, okay. I did my multiplication tables in my head while doing a cartwheel because horses can't do that either, can they? Okay, I got the shot. You can stop talking, man. Why? Oh, and would you look at that? Now I'm Millie rocking because I've never seen a horse do this because they can't do this. No, they can't. Just stop. Okay, then why did my girlfriend leave me for a horse then? Huh? Wh what? And my boss fired me and replaced me with a horse. Okay? Dude, what are you talking about? My I... boss is my girlfriend. <laughs> what? You're a horse now too? Oh, come on. I am. I'm sorry. Uh, why is my ex-girlfriend calling me? What? <laughs> Hello? Hey, I know we haven't talked in a while, but can you put that camera horse on the phone? He sounds cute. Oh, come on. Okay, so they're super close to the finish line. And um, there's one scene where the, the blonde horse hater, bobsled boy, he like charges like head on at Man Tracker. Dude's got a lot of balls. He just has a ball pit down there. He has so many balls. And this part is pretty fucking crazy. <laughs> Yes. Straight up, what if he got him right there? 
What if he lassoed him and it like fucking got his neck, dude? Like what if it wrapped around? He's dead. There's, there's a fucking dead guy. He's not on the bobsled team anymore. He's on the bob dead team, okay? That guy's fucking toast. <laughs> that scene kind of makes me think that Man Tracker like legit killed people before. So if I turn up missing in the next few weeks, I this man, it was Man Tracker, okay? He saw this video and he got pissed at me. So please save me if I go missing. But how do you track the Man Tracker? Fuck, we need a Man Tracker tracker. If there's a Man Tracker tracker out there, comment below. <laughs> okay, so after that attempted murder with Lasso, um, the one guy, the strongest guy in the world, he makes it to the finish line, hooray, nice, good job, dude. I can't believe it, it's, it's almost like it, it's too good to be true. Um, but then the blonde guy gets stuck in the mud. I was stuck in the mud, I just got stuck, I just kept sinking. And then he loses. <laughs> nah, just kidding, he survives, maybe. So there's an episode of Man Tracker, a Canadian classic. So I was doing a little bit of research on this show and um, it aired up until like 2012, um, but they didn't like officially announce that it was canceled until uh, 2017. And that baffled me because I thought there was only like one season of this show, but there's seven, seven whole seasons of a horse boy chasing people in the woods and centaur cameramen, seven seasons. And to be honest, okay, to be perfectly honest as <laughs> insane and stupid and probably fake as this show was, I had a lot of fun watching it. It's just mindless bullshit, you know, and that's pretty fun to watch sometimes. I mean, you are watching this, so you understand. And I know I just made jokes about it for like a while, but I, th I think it's okay, actually. So Hollywood, okay, Hollywood, if you're watching, I need a man tracker, the movie, okay, please, please. It can be a horror movie that would translate really well. It could be an action, rom-com. I don't care, okay? I just need my horse boy, Terry Grant, trying to murder some people in the woods, okay? That's all I want, okay? Man Tracker, I love you. <coughs> oh, sorry. My throat feels a little hoarse. And it's a nice little horse. Okay. <laughs> All right, now a word from our sponsor. Hey guys, just want to thank ExpressVPN for sponsoring today's video. Can you tell I got a new green screen? ExpressVPN has sponsored a bunch of my videos in the past, and I'm always happy when I get to work with them again because, lo no lie, I use ExpressVPN literally every single day. Over the past few weeks, I've been doing a lot of traveling, and uh, while I was traveling, I was also working on videos. So I had to use a bunch of public Wi-Fi connections in like cafes, hotels, airports and stuff. And hackers can easily use these public Wi-Fi connections to steal like my credit card info, my passwords. And that's scary, dude. Scarier than man tracker chasing you and your bobsled teammate through a forest. If you don't use a VPN, you're putting your personal info in danger. And if a hacker steals that info, they can open bank accounts in your name, steal your passwords, access your email, your social media, all because you didn't have ExpressVPN protection. And I'm not trying to scare you, okay? I just want y'all to be safe. If a skateboard was a hacker, ExpressVPN is a helmet. Yeah! Another amazing thing about ExpressVPN is being able to choose a server from one of 94 countries. Because up here in Canada, we may have amazing television shows about horsemen, but we don't have access to regular shows. But with ExpressVPN, I can access all my favorite shows with just a few clicks, dude. ExpressVPN has apps for every device, easy to use, and it was voted the number one VPN service by TechRadar. And by me, right now. And for less than $7 a month and a 30-day money-back guarantee, you got no reason not to give it a go, okay? So take back your internet privacy today and find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description or just go to expressvpn.com slash curtistown. All right, thank you so much, ExpressVPN. I've been Curtis, now let's get back to Curtis. Bye. All right, thank you so much for watching today's video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please press the like button because one like equals one impenetrable bush. And those are great. Leave a comment, let me know if you wanna see more videos about me talking about old Canadian TV shows. Uh, let me know if you remember watching the show. Um, and let's just, let's just talk about horse boys, dude. Um, and if you're a man tracker tracker, please let me know because I may need your help. Obviously, don't forget to press the subscribe button because I make a video every single week and they're so much fun, dude. And as soon as you press the subscribe button, you become a citizen of Curtis Town. Uh, it's the best place to live in the world and I'm the mayor. 
and you have to be nice to me, please. Other than that, check the description uh, for links to my Instagram, my Twitter, uh, links to my weekly podcast called Very Really Good. Uh, if you enjoy my videos, you'll enjoy my podcast as well. And there's there, there's a bunch of episodes, but you can hop in whenever. I just talk about random stuff. It's a good, good old time. Links to Curtis Town merch down there. You can grab it and you can uh, show that you're proud to be a citizen of Curtis Town. And it's very soft and good. I'm wearing one right now and it's nice. Okay. Also grab tickets to the We Are Two Different People tour. It's starting up real soon. And if you live near one of the cities that we're performing at, come see us. It's going to be an awesome show. Uh, we all worked really hard on what we're doing. So it would mean a lot. Thanks again to ExpressVPN for sponsoring today's video. And thank you for watching. It means the world. Um, I got to go though. I got to go do the horse boy boogie. Goodbye. <laughs> Hey guys, this isn't water, it's grease, and I will only shower if you press that subscribe button. Okay, thank you so much. Bye. I wanna be a horse boy, baby.